Aloha, I'm Athena Angelique. Welcome to Such Good Dogs. Today we are going to start you off with all the basic information you need to know to start training your dog. A training lesson or a training class, if you attend one of these things, it is about training you to train your dog. As trainers, we do get a lot of people who ask us, well, can't you just take the dog for like a week or something? I could, and I could train in a lot of good behaviors and train out a lot of bad behaviors, but if I bring the dog back to you and you guys don't change anything, your dog will go back to whatever they were doing before. So it's about you guys learning what to practice so you can practice when your trainer is not around. Regardless of the age of the dog you have adopted, whether you got an eight week old puppy or an eight year old dog, we're still gonna start you in kindergarten and work our way up. Everything you train with your dog, you wanna make sure you train at your dog's individual pace. Many times the reason people fail in their training is because they're trying to move forward more quickly than their dog is actually ready for. So some things your dog might pick up super, super quick, some things might just take your dog a little bit longer. So make sure you train everything with your dog at your dog's own individual pace. We do about hour long sessions for dog training because that's about the attention span of most dogs. At some point during your training, your dog might just be done for the day. That's okay, we expect those things to happen. Again, it's about you guys learning what to do so you can practice when the mood does strike your dog. The type of training we're going to do is what we call positive reinforcement training. Basically, that means making your dog work for something your dog likes. So if your dog likes food, hooray, your job's gonna be much, much easier. Some dogs like toys best, some dogs like petting or praise best. It's about whatever your dog likes best. So from hence this day forward, your dog shall no longer get anything for free. Now, I don't say that to be mean. I say that so you can establish yourself as a leader within your own household. So simple things like your dog sits and waits to be fed or to put the leash on before we go for a walk. What we don't want is your doggy knows where the doggy cookie jar is in the kitchen and the dog goes there and barks and you're like, oh, you want a cookie? That's the type of thing we want to try and avoid. Your dog should work for everything. Everything should be earned by your dog, including freedom. A big mistake that a lot of people make is giving too much freedom too fast. The other part of training for what I do is what I call energy balance. It is very, very important for you to be aware of your energy anytime you're dealing with your dog. So if you're ever angry, frustrated, nervous, anxious, upset, any of those negative kind of emotions, your dog will not listen to you. Dogs will not listen to or follow a leader who is not calm. So I tell everybody this, and I've had to do this with my own dog sometimes. If you feel yourself getting one of those negative emotions, take a moment and go, okay, Athena says relax, take a deep breath, let it go, then deal with the situation. You guys must also be willing to work and grow and change with your dog. So there are three things on your body that are rewarding to dogs. You guys have any guesses what they are? They are voice, touch, and eye contact. So generally speaking, anytime you look at a dog, talk to a dog, or touch a dog, you're rewarding whatever behavior they're doing. This is really important to keep in mind so we don't unintentionally reward bad behaviors. So the biggest, easiest example of this is dogs who like to jump up on people. So most of the time when a dog jumps up on somebody, what does that somebody do? Oh, they pet them or they catch their paws or they push them down, so they're always touching them, right? They usually say something even if it's no, and they always look down at them. Do you guys know what you're supposed to do with a dog that jumps up on you? What you wanna do is cross your arms and turn your back. I cross my arms because otherwise this can become a dangly little toy sometimes, right? So say I turned around and then the dog came around to the other side and tried to jump on me again. I'm gonna turn away again because what is it that that dog is looking for? Attention. So if the dog jumps on you and you give the dog attention, the dog learns, if I jump on you, I get what I want. If, however, we make that dog wait, keep all those paws on the ground and or sit, and then we give the dog attention, then we both get what we want. So touch, talk, eye contact, very, very important. Now, dogs do a lot of behaviors naturally that we don't so much like as humans. Things like barking, digging, chewing. My personal favorite, rolling on something dead and stinky. So what do we do with those behaviors that they do naturally as dogs that we don't so much like as humans? You basically have three options. You can ignore, you can avoid, or you can redirect. Most of the time for most things, we're gonna have to redirect. So 
So simple example, say your dog is chewing on your wood furniture at home, we're going to redirect them to chew on a bone or a toy or something appropriate. Smaller things sometimes you can ignore or avoid, like if your dog barks one time and then stops, I can ignore that. I can avoid the dead frog in the middle of the road. But again, most things you're going to have to redirect. So I want you to think of it this way. Instead of focusing on something I don't want you to do, let's focus on something I do want you to do. Now, how quickly do you think you have to catch a bad behavior to punish or do something about it? It's really fast. It's actually within two seconds, right? So if you don't catch them within that two seconds, the moment has passed and we can't really punish. Now, obviously dogs have memory. If you go away for a week and come back, your dog's gonna remember who you are, but dogs don't live in the past, they don't live in the future. Dogs live in the moment. So say you happen to be gone for two hours and an hour into it, your dog had an accident and went potty on the floor. Then you come home an hour later and you're like, what did you do? Your dog doesn't mentally go, oh right, like an hour ago I had to super pee. Sorry guys. They just don't really make the connection like that. So that is where prevention and management is going to come in. It's important to manage your dog's behavior in between your training sessions. So I encourage anybody who has a new dog in their home, regardless of it's a, if it's a puppy or an older dog, things like kennels or crates or baby gates, we gotta manage our dog's behavior, right? If we can't trust our dog to not chew on things or not potty on things, they shouldn't have full access to the house. A brand new dog in your home, regardless of age, shouldn't have full access to your house anyway. Remember, everything should be earned by your dog. Other things you should keep in mind for training, Proper exercise, very, very important. Every dog should be walked every single day. My minimum recommendation is a half an hour twice a day, minimum. That's for the average dog. Now some dogs might need a little bit more than that, like Miss Ahsoka here. She needs more like two hours a day to be happy and not crazy. Very few dogs are gonna need less than that. I have a 13 year old Great Dane mix. He would be happy with 10 minutes around the block. But again, most dogs, average, you wanna shoot for a minimum of half an hour twice a day. Other things to keep in mind, good relationship with you, the owner. If you haven't already, you will reach that point where you wanna strangle your dog, right? Remember, take a deep breath. He's your buddy, he's your pal. Socialization is very important. You wanna have a dog who's socially comfortable in as many different situations as possible. So I do encourage everybody to take your dog with you everywhere you possibly can. Lots of coffee shops allow dogs, Lowe's and Home Depot allow dogs. If you can take your dog to work for a lunch hour or an afternoon, your friend's house, the beach, the park, everywhere and anywhere you possibly can, take your dog with you. Now when it does come to socialization, you wanna make sure you're socializing your dog and introducing them to these new things at a pace that your dog is comfortable with. Never force a scared dog into any situation. Go at your dog's own pace. Consistency, very, very important. If you have more than one person in your household, you guys have to be consistent with each other. So if mom says sit, dad also says sit and not sit down. If dad says the dogs are not allowed in the bed, mom has to support and enforce that rule. Whatever you guys decide your rules are. Being inconsistent will be very, very confusing for your dog and it will set back progress of your training. Training sessions, you wanna keep them short and sweet. Always, always quit with, hooray, you did a really good job, as opposed to, you're not getting it, I don't wanna play anymore, okay? Quit on that high note, hooray, you did so good. That way your dog wants to keep trying and keep learning and keep working for you. Now, to begin training, we first need to know what motivates our dog. There's this little ice cream shop that has their sizes, like it, love it, gotta have it. So you have to figure out what your dogs like it versus their gotta have it is. So most, for most dogs, a like it would be like a dry biscuit or even their dog food. Uh, love it would be like a regular stinky treat, like a Zoops treat or something. Whereas for most dogs, their gotta have it, like, oh my God, I really want this thing, would be lunch meat or real chicken or turkey or something like that. Now every dog's gonna be different. Some dogs might love chicken, some dogs might hate it. Some dogs like fish or bacon the best. Experiment with your dog, see what kind of flavors they like. You will find out what is your dog's like it, what is their love it, what is their gotta have it. During your training, we're gonna start with a low value and then work our way up to the highest value if we need to. Now if you're out in a space like this, we're in a big open area park right now. There's highly distracting things and smells everywhere, right? 
There's some chickens running around here. There's all kinds of smells. So you're going to need something that's a little higher value. Whereas if you're working at home, usually your dog will work for that lower value because we have less distractions. So how many times do you guys think you should say a commander keyword like sit or come before your dog responds? Who said one? One time. We want to say things one time and one time only. A lot of people get in that habit. Sit, 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 right? We want our dogs to respond the first time I ask for something, not the fifth or 10th or 20th time. So nicely try and remind each other. We want to say things one time and one time only. Now for your training, for everything you train with your dog, you can pick any word you want for anything, like the word banana or tree or whatever, as long as once you pick a word for something, you stick with it. The very first thing you guys are going to get to pick today is what's called a marker word. A marker word is a word or a sound that's going to mean to your dog, yay, that's what I wanted you to do. So for most people, their marker word is good or yes or the clicker if you wanted to do clicker training. I do recommend you use something short and sweet. If you're already saying like good girl or good boy, I recommend shortening it to good. We want that easy, short and sweet thing because it is something you're going to be saying a thousand times a day. The majority of my clients use the word good. I personally used yes with my dogs, but again, you can pick whatever you want. The marker word is your first and most important tool in your training box when it comes to training your dog. So from hence this day forward, if you ask your dog to do something and they do it, good. If your dog just happens to be doing something you like, good. The more we mark the good behavior, the more your dog wants to engage in that good behavior. Now we also have the opposite of that, which we call the no reward marker, which is going to mean to your dog, that's not what I was looking for you to do. But we want to make sure we give it to the dog in a way that's not going to shut them down. Most people think no. Generally, I'm okay with the word no. However, most people cannot say no without any anger or frustration coming out. And then it comes out more like no. And we want to try and avoid that. So instead, what I generally recommend is uh-oh or eh-eh. Hey, eh-eh, no, yes. So uh-oh is for more training things, like if you're trying to teach your dog a sit and they're just not quite getting it, uh-oh, you made a mistake. It is for more behavior things like don't chew on the wood furniture or chase after the cat. So we have our marker word, good or yes, or the clicker, and our no reward marker, uh-oh or eh -uh. So your homework to get you started is to build up your marker word. So what you're gonna do is very, very simple. You're gonna say your marker word, good, give your dog a treat. Or yes, give your dog a treat. Whatever your marker word is, good, give a treat. Good, give a treat. Good, give a treat. What we're doing is what we call charging up that marker word. Basically, you're making your dog understand that when I hear this word good, something yummy is gonna follow. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this was informative. If you do have an appointment coming up with us, we'll see you soon. Scratching time. All right, are you done? You lay down.